You're listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ and Darren. Darren, uh, it's glad to be back. I know I missed last week, but uh, let's get right into it because there's so much happening. We need to get to the markets first. Yeah, though. let's have a market rundown. So February, this February second, Sunday, uh, Bitstamp's trading around eighteen sixteen. Uh, the the hash rate's still going up, so we c- approximate hash rate of the network is 20 petahashes. Petahashes. 20 petahashes. That's substantial. Yes, the, the uh, Litecoin hash rate is at 55 megahashes. Uh, difficulty's gone up a little bit, we w- but we expect difficulty to go back down next time. And gold and silver, gold's trading uh, at 1245 right now, and silver's at the extremely cheap 11, uh, 1917. Wow, so the, the markets are, are kind of uh, stabilized, I would say. I mean, the, the Litecoin market, of course, is, is being affected by the hashing rate, Yeah, but it doesn't seem like it's that significant. Yeah, it's, it's in the 20 to 22 range, so it's like right. in a 10% range, so that's not too bad. And Bitcoin's been really stable, yeah, right around 800. It, it goes down below 800, it goes above 800, below, yeah, so it's been stable for about a month, which is a lot. So that's really in, good. In Bitcoin days. Yes, as far as lending confidence to individuals <laughs> yeah. getting into the market. Obviously, a lot of people want to see it go up that are holding Bitcoin, but as far as new people are concerned, this is an opportunity to get involved while it's uh, still very stable and you don't have to, uh, I guess, worry so much about where it's going to go or, or whatever. I don't know. I, I'd like to see stability because it sort of uh, it helps with those news reports about, oh, the volatile Bitcoin. Yeah, you know, like the, the who knows whether it's going to hit the moon or drop out of anywhere. You know, it's like. <laughs> but anyway, we've have got a special guest with us in studio today. That's right. And uh, so, so Robert uh, Matthias, uh, Matthias. So Matthias, yes, Matthias. Matthias. Robert, uh, what do you, uh, you're, you're significant here for a reason we brought you on the show because you, in fact, bought a car with Bitcoin. Yes, I did. I went to uh, Keene, New Hampshire, and I bought a car with four Bitcoin from uh, Daryl Perry of Peace, Love, Liberty Radio. And there's actually a video of this uh, uh, I've saw, I saw on YouTube, and uh, it's great. Is, in, is this the first car sale for Bitcoin that's we, happened in New Hampshire? We believe it is. That's why we documented it, because to our knowledge, it's never been done. Um, there's actually a newer video that was just put out yesterday by uh, Joel Valenzuela, where he, uh, re-du- he uh, re-edited it with... Uh, um, a soundtrack to it and everything make make it look more professional more polished yeah that's the one i saw actually oh okay it's it's okay. nice and sharp he doesn't it's a lot of fast cuts and and yeah. with a background background music but it explains the whole deal in uh without speaking which is really good i think those videos are really clever but you also have a youtube channel isn't that right yes um my youtube channel is the volunteers rebel um originally my goal with that channel was more just kind of like wake up uh conservatives and whatnot but now that I'm here for the Free State Project, I want to like document as much as I can here and kind of show people out there what life is like here in New Hampshire. Interesting. So, so you recently moved here. I've only been here eight days. Eight days. Eight and, days. Wow. And that's, that's really impressive. And you say you moved here with the Free State Project? Yes, Free State Project. That's why I came here. All right. Excellent. And um, so you've entered into this sort of, uh, I guess, community or neighborhood I don't know if it goes beyond community at this point, but Bitcoin is pretty big here, wouldn't you say? I have spent so much Bitcoin <laughs> uh, in this uh, community in the last week. Um, I've paid for uh, bar tabs. I've paid for coffee. I've, I bought a bed with uh, Bitcoin. Um, I paid for a uh, agorist taxi service to Keen with Bitcoin. So yes, uh, Bitcoin goes a long way in this community. Excellent. And how long have you been involved with Bitcoin, or how long have you been um, knowing I, about it? I've been following it for about two years. Uh, I wish I uh, jumped in when I knew it was when I found it about you know ten dollars. That's when I kind of started watching. As many it. people do. I know. I'm one of those people. Like, why didn't I buy? Um, but uh, yeah, I've been following it for about two years. And how long have you actually been using it uh, as a currency to you know in exchanges for what you want? Eight days. Eight days. So you basically, <laughs> it, it wasn't until you moved here that you actually found it useful? Uh, um, no, I've used it online from online, time to time right. for different purchases, but like using it day-to-day affairs like with ease, that doesn't exist uh, in a lot of locations, but here it's amazing. Um, I actually uh, have another um, side story when I was in Keene. Uh, what, Corner News? Is that the name of the... Um, there's a place in yep, Keene that accepts... Corner News. They accept, uh, they accept uh, Bitcoin. Um, I've never gone to a retail location that accepts Bitcoin. 
And I've also never bought silver before. I bought my first quarter round Sons of Liberty Mint silver with Bitcoin at retail. Wow. And I will, oh, I have that in my wallet and then like, I'll always keep that in my wallet. I'm never going to sell that piece of silver because like, it's my first time buying both at the same, you know, using Bitcoin at retail, buying silver. It's like nowhere and else in New Hampshire can that happen. That's, that's really impressive. That's <laughs> and, sort of crossing and, the street. And, there, and there's something else here. When the first time I bought silver, it was in Kentucky and I paid sales tax. Oh, wow. So that's something you probably didn't think about. You didn't pay sales tax I, on it. I didn't either. pay sales tax on it either. Yep. So that's that's impressive. Buying silver with Bitcoin and avoiding the FRNs altogether, the uh, the dollar. There you go. So, well, it, it's good to have you here, yeah, Robert. And, and it was a Sons of Liberty. Uh, yeah, no, quarter. it's a Sons of Liberty yep. uh, quarter ounce. Yeah, yeah, yep. we've had a day on the show from the from the mint, and uh, we're really excited. To, uh, they've in fact uh, been rolling out some new one ounce pieces. I think I've seen some, uh, and I think they've got some new. Um, the dies for the new new pieces they're making they're showing on some facebook if you check out their facebook page uh and also do you have a facebook page that you're also promoting um i'm not really promoting it right now because okay. uh me and uh joel we have we we were doing a show uh via google hangouts uh over the internet before i got here it's called the rebel love show it's a show that i actually put on my channel um, but now that we're here we really want to uh, eventually start to get that off the ground like a once a week show talking about uh, what's going on in the Free State Project, like the culture, the activism, the political action, like all the above. Um, the uh, link for that, uh, there's a Facebook page for it. It's called, uh, it's just facebook.com slash the, uh, the Rebel Love Show. That's okay. where you can find any content for that. I'm not really, there's no content yet, but once that show goes up and running, I'm going to, you know, push that hard. And just a side, side final side question, uh, because we have been talking about so many alt-currencies Besides Bitcoin, is there any sort of alt currency that you're interested in? Or I you're like watching? Litecoin. You like Litecoin? Yeah, I actually, uh, um, like I always, uh, on my uh, YouTube channel, I always accept both Bitcoin and Litecoin as donations. Uh, I try it. And you know, one thing I do, like in a lot of my videos, I'll leave that as a donation. I'll have both QR codes on there. And it's, I do it for two reasons. A, yeah, I like the donations. But B, you know, a lot of people that don't know what cryptocurrencies are, They'll see that, and hopefully they'll like. Well, what is Bitcoin? What is Litecoin? Maybe they'll you know maybe they'll search for it. So I always throw it in there just because I want people to be aware that it even exists. Sure, sure, yeah, excellent. Well, you're you're welcome to the show, and and you're certainly welcome to comment on any of the stories we talk about and, okay. and interject any sort of ideas you have. But there's a lot to talk about, Darren, isn't there? Well, there is. There's been crazy things happening in the emerging markets this uh, this past week. Actually, the past few weeks, uh, there's been uh, some. The, the Argentinian troubles we talked about last week, or I talked about last yeah, week. Yeah, the fiat edition. Yeah, the fiat edition. Uh, the, well, uh, the pesos being even even worse now. Uh, so what happened? It's, it's trading at eight pesos per dollar. Oh, wow. They just like readjusted it again. So last show it was at 7.1 pesos per dollar around there. Now it's at eight pesos per dollar. Um, and I, the last I heard, the black market rate was around 13 pesos per dollar. So... Uh, we're seeing the official rate catch up to the black market rate, uh, which should help take some pressure off of the the uh, the white market or whatever you want to call it. So, uh, so uh, there's a lot of trouble in what they call the emerging markets, which that's at least that's what they call them. I don't know if that's the best term to use. And so are you are you referring to uh, like third world world countries? Yeah, that's kind of like Argentina. emerging markets. Yeah, okay. But I mean, not but, quite, not quite industrialized, but yeah. yet they're on their way. Yeah, they're on their way. Okay, and, just, and, and and like uh, Turkey, I would consider kind of already industrialized as far as I know. But they've they've been having trouble with their currency again. Um, and there's been a few articles like, um, well, Turkey is one of the two countries that that imposed some uh, some gold tariffs uh, a few months ago with India, wasn't it? That's yes, yes. And uh, so they're sort of preventing their their populace from. You know, finding alternative stores of stores of value other than right. the, the currency. I guess so. you know your currency is doing poorly if they don't let you buy gold. Yeah, don't let you buy something. <laughs> just, just, just keep their yeah. So you know they have to protect it when they do stuff like that. Uh, so the, the the Federal Reserve has actually received some criticism because of because basically they say they're causing like the Federal Reserve is causing uh, this this issue. And and another thing this past week is a, is the Federal Reserve tapered. Uh, they're again they're quantitative easing. They tapered again, another ten billion. So now they're down to sixty-five billion for February. So they're going to make a new sixty-five billion dollars and put that out for, in circulation. 
Now they they were at eighty five billion. Yes, that's right uh, per month, and they've been doing that for a while. And people are claiming that since the Fed is tapering, reducing the amount of quantitative easing, that's putting stress on the emerging emerging markets. And they're uh, like in Brazil, they're raising interest rates and <laughs> to to try to deal with it. Also, Turkey raising interest rates. I find uh, that hard to believe, there. I really do too, because it, sixty-five billion. If that's what's being eased, that's a significant portion of, and that's only a month. Yeah, that's but, a significant portion of actually all the of the monetary base. I don't, I don't see how you can say that's irrelevant or or ignored. I think really what's being pointed out is how poor some of the emerging market currencies are. Yeah, uh, it, it, I mean, this is relative to the dollar. They're doing very poorly. If they were managed better. They would be uh, a reasonable competitor to the dollar, I imagine. What if we're just seeing a, a systematic issue at hand where the central banking and the fiat currencies at large are just all suffering because the, it's just, you know, it's just not a sustainable method of uh, currency manipulation? Well, I certainly think it's not sustainable. Right. So maybe we're just seeing that. But I, I think that because the other currencies are doing so poor, that that might help the dollar uh, well, live. sure, stay, I mean, re- if, stay as a reserve currency. I mean, we're not going to see Argentine pesos be a reserve currency. I mean, I've, I've speculated that maybe the yuan someday would uh, try to get that status. I, well, what if the idea is that it. people don't need a reserve currency anymore? Is is why why does the uh, I I understand that because the peso is doing really badly, it makes the dollar look good, right? And the dollar. It might be doing very badly as well. In fact, it might have troubles because certain countries aren't going to want to buy treasuries anymore. Uh, they're not hoarding dollars. I'm pointing to China, of course. Right. And I'm looking at how the value of the dollar, the inflation, of course, is, is still having effects. You know, it's not like it isn't having an effect, but it's just not having as significant an effect as, say, Argentina or some of these other countries, maybe Turkey. I know India, I don't know what their currency is doing, but they also had huge gold tariffs too. Yeah, they, they've recently lowered some of their restrictions on gold imports, so um, they might be out of the, uh, out of the water now. They've, they've used some of their reserves uh, to, to help stabilize their currency. Well, we've got this, this uh, I think you were kind of referring to this, this story we were looking at from uh, mensnewsdaily.com. Are we on the verge of a massive emerging markets currency collapse? And it, it's basically, as you, as you mentioned, talks about how the Federal Reserve is to blame because it's begun to taper. And I guess it's, it's a, it might be a red herring to make this sort of argument that the Fed is to blame. Because if we looked at what Venezuela did in putting sort of uh, prices, uh, setting prices for electronics when they overtake electronics stores to make their, their people happy right before an election, that's going to have impacts across the market. When those stores shut down, they can't get, you know, any more parts. And all of a sudden you have large sectors of your economy that can't operate anymore because the government stepped in and set the prices so low that they can't replace product. Uh, that's not necessarily due to the dollar. Right. You know, that those, those sorts of situations have no, the Fed isn't really even involved. That's simply a bad move by the, the local uh, central bank, whether it's Venezuela, Venezuela or <laughs> Argentina, or Chile, <laughs> Brazil. Uh, Ukraine, South Africa, Argentina, uh, Turkey, Taiwan, and Malaysia are just some of the emerging markets that have been hit. I mean, this, that's what the article is talking about. And yes, we've talked about several of these uh, having issues already uh, up till this time, before the Fed even started tapering. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, they, yeah, exactly. And so now uh, there's just a little bit more strength added to the dollar, a little bit more uh, a bit tr- faith or trust in it, I imagine, because they're not printing it as quickly. Uh, so, and that, that makes these other currencies that we're already having trouble uh, that much, uh, the, the, that much more of a poor competitor to any other currency. So, right. So people really are still going to want dollars. They're yeah, still gonna, so I don't, I don't really don't think you can blame the fed for this. I yeah. really don't. Well, let's look at this, uh, this other article. You, you, yeah. There, there, it's kind of a different perspective. There's this article here about why the dollar's demise is over. Stated, have you? Seen? Yeah, that's exactly it. This is uh, from the Washington Post, and and I saw this, and this is this um the, this got into something I was thinking because you know everybody or not everybody, but uh, a vocal minority maybe uh, says that oh dollars going to have trouble dollars like we even talked about how it wasn't sustainable earlier, but 
and they all, and this has been said for quite some time, and he, pretty much since Nixon uh, took us off the gold standard, and uh, it hasn't happened. Yeah. I don't think it actually ever will. Okay, not in our lifetime. Um, I mean, the Fed's been around for a hundred years now. Yep. I mean, it, the value's gone down. Wait, what? Ninety six, ninety seven percent. But I mean, people are still going to work. They're still getting paid. Uh, the world still kind of is running on it. Uh, I mean, eventually, I think. Um, other currencies like Bitcoin or whatnot will surpass it, and everyone just start adopting that. But I don't think there's just going to be an overnight crash in the dollar. Yeah, I, I, I'm in that same boat. I, I obviously have this sort of uh, maybe, maybe a hoop dream to, uh, I guess, about the dollar actually suffering as it should for a currency that's so overextended and so basically just it's just ether at this point. There's really nothing backing it other than the force of the United States military. Yeah. I mean, really, that's what it comes down to. How many how many bombs can be dropped to back up this dollar? Well, the uh, problem is a majority of Americans believe in that uh, threat from the government, that power. Yeah, and and why not? It's it's quite evident that the United States government has significant authority, influence, persuasion, or just sheer power, just the brute force. Yeah. So, the the dollar demise. I it's it's definitely. At this point, I'm looking not at the dollar demise. I, I'm more focused uh, at looking at the rise of, of Bitcoin and alternatives. Uh, obviously, gold and silver have been pretty stable lately. Gold was down a little bit this past uh, this past year. This past year, yeah. And silver too, but they're they're both kind of stabilizing right now. Uh, Bitcoin stabilizing. You're seeing a lot of cryptocurrencies come out that are being successful for whatever reason. Uh, we talked a lot about the Dogecoin yeah. <laughs> and how it's successful because of factors that, well, you wouldn't even think would make a successful currency. It's got a meme attached to it. And, and then we talked about Ethereum, uh, Zerocoin. There's a lot of really promising technologies that will sort of make the Fed obsolete, it seems. Yeah, don't end the Fed, just ignore it. Yeah. And this kind of brings us to the other article we have here uh, from Coin Report. The CEO of Visa, Bitcoin, not a competition. So uh, I guess Visa, the CEO of Visa thinks that Bitcoin is not a competitor to the payment processor and debtor, I should well, say. Well, I can tell you I made a purchase today on Tiger Direct, and I did not use a credit card. That's right. I used Bitcoin, and uh, I don't know how you could say it's not a competitor. And and in fact, the CEO of Overstock in in one of the articles when he talked about using Bitcoin before they actually accepted it, the, the main reason was the payment processing fees. It's a lot cheaper. It's yeah, a lot it's cheaper 1%. for a company to, to accept it. Yeah, 1% fee versus 2 to 3% fee, depending yeah. on uh, which card you're looking at and how what the amounts are. So, yes, it is a competitor. It is something that is more efficient and easier to use than Visa. And, in fact, there's so much less hoops to jump through, less paperwork, you know, you don't have to file for this thing. You don't and need wait. To yeah, you don't need to uh, do a bunch of paperwork and show an ID to get a Bitcoin wallet. Right. And it's, it's in the real, very real sense, it's safer. I, I signed up with uh, uh, Tiger Direct, uh, a recent Bitcoin merchant, and uh, I just, I never gave him a credit card number or anything. I just, I just said, okay, pay this much. And really, all I'm risking is what I paid. I mean, they may run off with the... Uh, the, with the Bitcoin and not ship the product, but that would be all I lose. But with a credit card, you can give that to a nefarious site and they can, who knows what they can do with it. They can sell it to somebody else and somewhere and, and charge up all kinds of other things, which is kind of ridiculous to think about. Well, I think it's also a, a radically different model, whereas Bitcoin is a model of saving because you, you can only spend what you have. So you have to save Bitcoins enough to spend them, whereas Visa and, and credit cards are a model of debting. Or, or, or incurring debt, where you don't you don't actually have any money on the card. That's debt that you are incurring that you have to pay back with interest. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes the interest itself is just outrageous once you get over a month out. And uh, so it, it's sort of it's a completely different model. Yeah, the credit card. I mean, I think it's you would be hard pressed to find somebody that didn't find credit card companies uh, that leave a bad impression on them. Um, I have been trying, I, my whole life I've tried to be very responsible with credit, but one time in grad school I had trouble uh, with the payment I made with the credit card and, and couldn't pay back. 
And so I could make the payment. I just couldn't pay it back. So it was a weird position for me. It was something I'm not used to. And so I got one of those zero interest credit cards in the mail. I'm like, okay, sure. Transfer everything over 0% interest. Great. But you have to read those things so much. And I'm, pr- I'm pretty vigilant. I try to read everything. But what I did not read about the terms of service is that you transfer this 0% balance over. But if you charge anything on that card, they charge you interest on what you charged. Okay. So, and when I made a payment, I paid off the 0%, not the part that was earning interest. Okay. So, or, or earning them interest, not right. earning me interest. So, but... So it, it put me in a position where, yes, it's a 0% loan, but everything I pay doesn't help pay down the interest that they're charging me on what I charge. So, and this is just, and it, I do believe it's my fault because I didn't read the whole terms of service, but have you, there's long, those are long. Oh things. yeah. And uh, yeah, so I, yeah. That's, yeah, that's the way it is nowadays where there's, there's this really enticing offer and in order to really understand this offer, you have to read through like 27 pages of fine print kind of outrageous. Yeah, sometimes. I mean it it should be like do 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 it it seems like there should just be bullet points that point out here's where we're going to get you. Here's where we're going to make profit. Here. Then they I wouldn't mean, yeah, but no the, one would. Yeah. I mean, if you look at these things, it's uh they you're signing away your right to trial or seriously with credit yep. cards that, like that you have to submit to arbitration. I don't know who they want to arbitrate these disputes. Right. Um I I don't I don't think they're nefarious in general. That's why people still use them. I mean, they don't, there's not much arbitration that has to go on if people use the credit cards. The, I just liken it to a fishing way. hook. You know, it's just a, it's yeah. got that worm dangling there and then you go and bite it and you're hooked. You, yeah. you're, there's no way out of it. I mean, you file bankruptcy, that's about it. Uh, well, and yeah. in some cases then you're having trouble well, to prove. Well, I actually set. had to write down all my budget. You know, I had to write down all my expenses and everything. And I figured out I was going out to eat every Friday. And if I stopped doing that, it would uh, that would free up enough money to help and that seriously that's all it took was you know this going out which would be really hard for me to do because i like going out with my friends we would have steak or whatever and it was great but i i just stopped going for like two or three months and i got it paid off eventually well just to get you know that back to that that point i think bitcoin will you know bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and, and the alt currencies that are coming out will definitely encourage people to be better with their their finances yeah well there's something i've thought about with home ownership too it seems like uh the the way the market's set up now the 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 home ownership market actually rewards those who are the most reckless who take the most debt uh, people who will take the debt to buy the house will push the price up so somebody that's less willing to take debt will be priced out of the market so basically, uh, for general people, you need all this debt just to get a house. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really a, a sad state, sorry, state of affairs. Well, it's it's sort of been encouraged by the, I mean, the, the way the Federal Reserve works and, and just pumping tons and tons of free money out there. Yeah, I mean, l- low interest rates. I mean, right. I, I, I took the cheap money myself. And, because, and most markets or most, most business people, they see an opportunity to capitalize you know the free market sort of i mean the uh, the free money sort of perverts the the natural flow of of debt and and loaning and, mm-hmm. and responsibility and you get these bubbles and everything yeah. and then they have to bail everybody out and so like it goes back to the idea that bitcoin is more of a savings model where you you i'm sure there's going to be some bitcoin loans eventually there's going to be uh, well, they there already are and they've gone horribly yeah they've See? gone horribly people haven't paid them back i mean i mean and it's Really, you really can't expect somebody to pay it back. They they get a loan that might have been one thousand dollars, and now it's two twelve hundred or twelve thousand dollars or or fifty thousand dollars that they actually need to pay back. Right. And um, yeah, it would make sense. Yes, you can't pay that back. Okay, that's I understand. That's a fact. Great. Right. But uh, yeah, so these loans are. I would not get a loan in BTC. Um. So uh, period for anybody. Period. Right. Yeah. Well, it's uh, interesting. I, I've, I don't know what the CEO of Visa is really thinking. I think he really needs to have a talk with the CEO of Overstock. Yeah. It sounds like he's just putting yeah. his uh, head in the sand. And, yeah. And I'm looking forward to seeing the CEO of Overstock. I, I That's hear, right. He's coming to New Hampshire, isn't he? That's right. There's a uh, an event coming up called Liberty Forum. It uh, occurs the 20, 20th or something, 21st. 20-something. It's a weekend of na- in... Here in Nashua, New yeah, Hampshire. Yeah, yeah. And it should be interesting because the CEO of Overstock, CEO of Overstock, is going to be giving a 
a speech and talking about Bitcoin, and it's definitely going to be a very Bitcoin-centric cr crowd. In fact, oh, yeah. the Lamassu Bitcoin Ventures debuted their Bitcoin machine. Uh, well, they debuted it in, in DC, DC, but it, it came to the Liberty Forum a week later last, last year. year. Yep. And that was back when Bitcoin was $25 in DC. It was $30, $30. when they get to uh, New, New Hampshire. Yep, yep. And so a lot of those people who put dollars in their machine are much Last happier year. folk. Yep, yep, yep. As long as they didn't gamble it away. I saw one guy who liked to, who had to learn not to gamble. Uh, <laughs> so it's put gonna be, money in the machine. It's going to be interesting because Bitcoin is certainly taking over the Liberty Forum. Uh, it ha it took over oh, Pork Fest yeah, this year. Yeah, it's it's been a major thing, and it's funny. I've been to like three Pork Fests uh, two two or three years ago. No, people knew about Bitcoin, but like we didn't know how to spend it or trade it. Uh, and that that particular Pork Fest, Mount Gox was down, so nobody knew what the price was. And <laughs> right. it's wonderful to see the Liberty uh, community, not just in New Hampshire, but you know, every a lot of libertarians and whatnot. Except you know, endor not just endorsing but embracing Bitcoin and. They see it. It's almost like everyone's always talking about, you know, end the Fed, get rid of it, and now we're all talking about forget that, ignore it. We have a you know a weapon at our disposal. Let's use something that will uh, benefit all of humanity, and that's Bitcoin. Yeah, it's 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 great to see the uh, the emerging markets of Bitcoin uh, happen in such a, a local scale here in New Hampshire, as well as what's going on across the world. Yeah, I mean the same thing could be happening in Argentina. We don't know it, right? <laughs> you know, and that would be. So much more valuable for people in Argentina with with these revaluations of their currency. Uh, that I mean, I I expect that's when Bitcoin will make its own. When when one of these let's call them emergency merging currencies uh, starts to hyperinflate again, mm -hmm. and now people actually have an alternative. I believe there was even a point. I want to say maybe as much as five or six months ago, where, where a news article quoted a prime minister of either Venezuela or Argentina talking about having a bit of the the government's holdings in bitcoin yeah and i think that would help <laughs> you know that would have i yeah. mean for them it would have been sensational because yeah. that was months ago and their currency has then since flopped so right. even if just bitcoin like per dollar is is straight at 800 their currency you know going up to seven or eight per dollar would have been just an impressive uh number yeah. with bitcoin right they could buy back their pesos and and uh, help well, you just could use it as a reserve. I exactly, mean, you could, and it would help. I, and it's at least hindsight's twenty twenty. Well, now but, now but individuals can have I mean, their own reserve, and they can do their own banking. Their own financial control is in their hands with Bitcoin, Litecoin, and these alt currencies. And I think that's the most heartening. Is, right, is the individual has that power. It does. You don't have to rely on a government or some bureaucracy, as as each individual can have that same ability. Well, yep. so. well, I've got two more updates for our listeners. Cool. So you know what happened with Ethereum, JJ? What happened? It was supposed to be launched as of yesterday, like uh, Friday at midnight. Yeah. So, so uh, I, well, today's Sunday, but uh, but it didn't. What happened? Uh, <laughs> Valeri, Vitalik. Yep. He was. Uh, he went down to the Bitcoin conference in Miami, and there was. A slew of interest in in the Ethereum that he has going. He gave this great talk. It's available on YouTube, where he like he basically gave five lines of code which would have done Namecoin in Ethereum. Um, it it's it's just it blows people out of the water. So he got so much interest. He got concerned about launching it that it, basically you won't be able to serve everybody right off the bat. So he's they're doing it. Um, um they're t taking their time. They want you know something you want to do right. So what they've done is they've released the test client. I think it's only available for Linux right now, but there's a t the, the client is available in a test net form. Uh, this is Bitcoin's had a test net for a while. Um, you, as they do updates with the um, with the client, they do it on the test net first to make sure that it's going to go smoothly and not crash yeah, the it's whole standard system. standard yeah, software so, development. So we, we've got actually an Ethereum test net set up for for Ethereum and. I am excited. I'm really excited. This is this is going to change the world. I mean, excellent. I mean, Bitcoin is nothing compared to this. This is Bitcoin's like a game compared to. I mean, this the, what what Bitcoin you, you is really to currency. Yeah. yeah, I am very excited. What Bitcoin is to currency, yep. Ethereum will be to Wall Street. 
Right. Okay. It's going to be awesome. Wow. That's a, so, that's a yeah, huge analogy. I, I think that's, I think that's what's, what's in our future. Robert, have you heard of this Ethereum? No, I have not heard this at all. Oh, it's, it's this Canadian guy. He's 19 years old. He uh, wrote a, a, a basically a whole new uh, protocol with it, their own client. It's got its own blockchain, got its own currency based on that blockchain. And there's a Turing complete scripting language on top of it, which means you can basically run a program that would act like a bond or would act like a stock or would act like a whatever, a, like crop a insurance. share in a, cor a corporation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like crop insurance or, or you can have smart property where, you know, you can transfer something in the blockchain and that trades the car. Oh. So, like, so like, imagine a yeah. blockchain full of scripts. Okay. Like, and and the, the currency itself is is what moves those scripts around but that currency then uses bitcoin or another currency to facilitate an exchange yeah whereas the ethereum would be more like the binding and it, it, it would be the vehicle and in that vehicle you would have other currencies that move about to actually transact or actually buy the shoes or actually buy the donuts yeah the I would ex I'm, I'm expecting bitcoin to still be used by tiger direct to buy your stuff or buy your shoes or buy coffee but uh, Ethereum will be used to buy bonds, will buy crop insurance, buy all kinds of fancy derivatives, you know, like like calls and puts on on the price of Bitcoin, even right. And this crop insurance could be paid out in Bitcoin, right? And these bonds could be paid out. In, the interest mm -hmm. on the bonds could be paid out in Bitcoin, right? And or so, Ethereum, or, right? Or whatever, or a, right? There's, yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, it, I, it it's very promising. Sounds exciting. It is. And what's the second update? Oh, the second update. Uh, let's see. Oh, there, there, it was something else to do with the, the markets around the, the world. Uh, okay. But I can't think of it right now. I think we covered it. All right. Okay. Well, excellent. So, uh, Robert, once again, where can people find out about your, your videos and such? Uh, just go to uh, YouTube, do a search for The Voluntist Rebel. You'll find me on there very quickly. Okay, excellent. And best of luck with the car. I hope that it works out great for you and then... I hope more people are buying big ticket items with Bitcoin. Well, that's one reason why I bought it. I mean, I just wanted to show that it can be done and hopefully other people keep selling bigger, higher end items with uh, Bitcoin. Awesome. Excellent. Well, thanks for coming on the show, Robert. Really appreciate it. And uh, it's a pleasure. Once, excellent. Once again, we want to give you the uh, disclaimer that we are not giving advice to buy or sell anything. We are simply giving opinions and ideas relating to what we think about the markets, Bitcoin, and everything yep. else so darren uh it's a great show great to be back yep and uh great looking to forward to back. a lot of uh new things happening you've tuned in to neocash radio check us out at neocashradio.com neocash radio where we discuss the future of money today